With the help of a Geiger counter, you can hear the background radiation that surrounds us. But did you know you can build a simple device that allows you to literally see the trajectory of these radiation particles? It's a vastly underutilized tool in exploring unexplained phenomena. It's called a cloud chamber. Suspended at the top of the chamber is felt soaked in isopropyl alcohol. The floor of the chamber is a metal plate. The chamber rests on a bed of dry ice, keeping the metal plate extremely cold. When radiation particles from the surrounding Earth or cosmic rays zip through the chamber, they leave a visible trail in their wake. It's really quite remarkable. The chamber works on a simple principle. The alcohol evaporates from the felt at the top of the chamber, but when the gas gets close to the cold metal plate, it starts to condense into a liquid. The air in this region near the plate is completely saturated with alcoholic vapor. High energy particles zooming through disrupt the electrons in these particles, and that disturbance creates the seed needed for an alcoholic cloud to form. The clouds form in the exact trail of the highly energetic radiation particle. I was able to construct this chamber in under an hour with some basic supplies. Links to the directions are down below in the description. While I was able to capture some cool particle streaks on camera, it is a bit hard to focus. You can see even more when you're looking directly at it. But with a bit more engineering and know-how, you can create chambers that give amazing photogenic results like this. These random streaks that make up the background radiation are the most interesting to me, but it's a bit more apparent what's going on when you put a piece of radioactive material in the chamber. Seeing radiation like this opens up a whole new understanding of radioactivity. Seeing it makes it more real and helps build up a useful intuition. The invisible, silent danger is made more obvious. Instead of vague fields, you can see that it's literally particles and waves emitted from a source. And sometimes that source is incredibly distant. When the protons and neutrons from distant supernova arrive in our atmosphere, they create muons, positrons, and other high energy particles, which will travel through your cloud chamber, giving their identifying trails. Occasionally, you might even see the wide trail of a proton, a cosmic ray making its way through your cloud chamber without yet colliding and decomposing. If you set a powerful magnet of known strength next to your cloud chamber, you'd be able to see the magnetic field deflect these particles, allowing you to calculate their mass and charge. It's with a setup like this which Carl Anderson captured physical evidence of the positron in 1936. The path captured in his photograph curved the opposite direction, but otherwise had similar properties to an electron. He had just seen the electron's antimatter pair. I'm not sure exactly how this antimatter particle exists within our matter world long enough to leave such a visible contrail, but it does. And chambers like these expose them. Carl Anderson won the Nobel Prize for showing this to the world in 1936. These exotic particles are not rare either. According to CERN's instructions for homemade cloud chambers, you can expect to see resultant particles from these massive cosmic collisions about once every minute. We're constantly bombarded by them. They almost certainly play a major role in our evolution, hitting our ancestors' DNA at choice locations causing favorable mutations. In modern day, these particles can have similar effects on the digital world, flipping digital bits from a zero to one or vice versa should they strike a bit in memory. There are safeguards against such cosmic digital interference, otherwise computing as we know it just wouldn't work. But it has caused some major issues including election recount inaccuracies and aviation errors. Seeing all of this got me thinking about one of the stranger and harder to believe aspects of many UFO and paranormal encounters. We often hear about extremely inconvenient failures of cameras and digital recording devices. It's often attributed to some sort of trickster type entity which does not want to be captured. It usually sounds to me like an extremely convenient excuse at best and nefarious lies at worst. But perhaps it's neither. There may be detectable physical reasons for such behavior. 
high energy particles shot at the digital device by whatever the devices were deployed to capture. Geiger counters or other detectors of ionizing radiation might not even pick up on levels above background during such an attack. But if cloud chambers were set up around the device, it would be immediately obvious if something was trying to interfere with targeted radiation. You'd see the resultant particles showing the telltale signs of a bit flipping collision inside your device. Cloud chambers could also give insight into subtle changes of background radiation that a Geiger counter may not be able to pick up on. And at the, the very least, it provides compelling visuals of the radiation present, giving a more comprehensive view of what is going on. I would love to see more UFO or paranormal investigations utilize this tool or other means of visualizing radiation present in the area. Do you agree with me? Tweet at your favorite show and ask them to use cloud chambers. I'm hoping for a cloud chamber analysis during the events at Skinwalker Ranch in Season 3. Find me on at bsquidding on Twitter and retweet my request if you agree. And I'll be continuing to dive into the un- and underknown aspects of science, UFOs, and UAPs. So please consider subscribing if you enjoyed this video. And thanks for watching, rather be squidding.